Hello, everyone. Uh, Postmaster General, good to talk with you. Nice to see you again, Michelle. Very good to see you. Um, so thank you for your remarks. Uh, we've got a, a few minutes for questions. And I will start with, you know, Concordia is all about bringing together public sector and private sector. And you exemplify this. You rose to the pinnacle of success in the private sector uh, in a very tough industry, I might add, supply chain and logistics. You took New Breed Logistics from a family-owned 10-person company into a nationwide uh, player with 12,000 employees. You worked across industry sectors. Um, and now you find yourself at a completely different organization. It's a 250-year-old government agency with an $80 billion budget, uh, 600,000 employees. Um, talk to us a little bit about the difference from building a company from scratch and now coming in and transforming uh, an organization that touches every American in the country. So, um, you know, tactically, from my characteristics of what I do and how I manage, it's really not that much, you know, not that much different. Uh, um, you know, uh, it's about innovation, it's about commitment to work and precision, uh, all those things that you, it's about competing in the marketplace, identifying what your power lanes are. Uh, in, in, in the marketplace and getting a competitive advantage on everything around you. Otherwise, it's not worth uh, doing. At the poll, you know, I had to build, pen, you know, build my organization through operational profitability um, uh, uh, and, and stagger my in investments that, that way. At the Postal Service, uh, you, and, and build our competencies as we went along. Postal Service is flush with competency and comp competent people. Uh, as I said, they're just kind of working, you know, on, you know, on, the, on the wrong uh, 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 things. The first, so I needed to reorganize them as opposed to recruit them, uh, and I need to, needed to try and get them engaged in uh, uh, new innovative initiatives, uh, you know, to compete in the, in, in the marketplace. Uh, uh, which is there. There's formidable competitors uh, 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 in there. I would say this, it's a little unique because of the political nature of what this is about. Uh, um, uh, so when I think about, I have to think a little more about what I um, you know, would normally do in a normal uh, 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 life. It's a little more bureaucratic. Uh, but I mean, I don't, you know, this, we have a public service mission. Uh, and, and, and that's important, that's a guiding light. The, when, it privately, it was a profit mission, right? So it's a little, it's a little uh, 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 you know, different, but uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm me every day when I walk in, you know? It hasn't, that much hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So this is so interesting. I think what you're doing is so important, Lewis, because you're writing a transformational playbook that needs to be applied to so many other parts of our government. Uh, I know there's, there's some life polling going on uh, here today. Uh, and I think if you look at some of the, the research and polling numbers, there's probably not a lot of Americans who uh, would raise their hand to say that our government works competently and efficiently and effectively across uh, every corner. Congress has let our, our uh, deficit expand to $33 trillion. The U.S. Navy is facing a dwindling and aging submarine fleet. We're not sure we can be ready in the Taiwan Strait. I was just on a panel about our supply chain readiness, which you know a lot about. We see a lot of leaders on TV, on Instagram, on Twitter talking about the problem and whose fault that it is, but not a lot of solving going on. Yet here you are at a uh, large government organization um, and you're doing things. You've got a plan for financial sustainability when nobody thought that it could be done. What would be your advice to leaders who need to be fixing the problem so that we all go from being spectators to solvers? Well, uh, 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 there's two parts to that. Number one, my mission is a little different than those who work in the uh, uh, political appointed type infrastructure. I mean, I try and simple, uh, and this would be my advice. I simp we are not, I have made us not a policy shop, right? We, we deliver mail, right? That's what we do. We have to deliver mail and cover our costs, and everything in the organization is focused on that. And anybody or anything, that get, tries to get in the way with that, it's, I consider a disruption to our plan, 
and uh, we're fierce about it, right? Because we, we, we have, you know, we're not going to run out of cash in 60 days. We're going to run out of cash in five years now. Uh, I'm still got a bad, I'm still running out of cash, right? So there's an urgency, uh, uh, you know, to that. I work with people in Washington all the time. We've changed that dynamic and how we interact with, the, with Congress and, and, and the White House. These are committed people to work. You know, they're smart people. I'm just blown away by the, the amount of aptitude that is there. And uh, unfortunately, there, uh, there are policy issues everywhere you go. And when policy meets up with execution, right, it's, it's bad. Right? That's what we had before I, you know, before I got there. And that's the one thing that I, that I think I've, I've, I, I, I've changed. I'm going, right? Um, and, we're go and we're going now because I have an entourage of 650,000 people that are following. And you know, you're going to have to have a pretty good argument to change that. Not the case in all these other you know, uh, things. You have good people go up, they have a plan, they want to do something. You, you know, what's the press going to say? What's the politics? You know, I don't think about it. You, most, some of you know what I went through in the first year. I was here. Didn't bother me a bit. Right? I just kept going on. They, they can't, you know, I had a governing body, a, 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 my whole structure. I'm an independent agency. It's a pretty powerful position, right, in terms of your decision making. And I use it, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, in the political process, that, that, that that exists in, in, in Washington, it's, it's hard for good people to move anything forward. And that's the problem, not the people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the process. But, but to give yourself credit, I mean, you, ha you do have to work with Congress. You have to work with three yeah. agency regulators and, mm -hmm. and a lot of political this and that. Um, so yeah. there, is, there is some political that's navigating. Right. And, and they have to work with me and us. Yes. Right? And that's yes. the difference now, right? Yeah. It, it, it's how you have to. Uh, uh, but look, there, you know, this is righteous work on everybody's part there. The place, everything that has been done, every, every recommendation or in, that I see now has been around for 15 years. And look what we got. And the answer is there, right? So let's try something new, mm -hmm. right? And that's what we're doing. So, so in talking about trying something new, you talked a little bit earlier about creative destruction um, and, and the role of technology. And I'm focused a, a lot on technology at the Kroc Institute. Um, you talked also about some tech-enabled carriers, and if you think about creative destruction that's happened in, in transformation that's happened in every other sector, government usually lags behind, um, but you are doing some, some new and innovative things with technology. Um, what sorts of things are you doing, and, and what does that mean for your financial sustainability? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think the first thing for us is uh, just getting in the game. I mean, we, 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 had we had technologists working on technology that had nothing to do with delivering mail and packages, <laughs> right? Uh, and that's the way the organization was set up. I've, you can't do any of that anymore. Everything's pointed at delivering mail and packages. So there's some basic things like, hey, instead of sorting 25 million packages a year by hand, a day by hand, why don't we get some sorting equipment, right? And why don't we get some good, you know, uh, you know, methodologies to, to you know, to, ha to handle that? So we've spent probably two billion dollars on uh, 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 high automation throughout our processing plants and 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 and, and, and so forth. Uh, technology, right? We, but you know, we have 30-year-old vehicles that burn on the streets, right? So we're, that, that's a big buying of uh, 66,000 new electric vehicles. Uh, with all the right, you know, monitoring systems in it and so forth, is a big, big advance in 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 in, in terms of that. And we can go across the whole operational uh, spectrum of where we were 30, 40 years behind. I have great, great technology department, though. So I'm starting to point them on. We have AI initiatives in our call centers. Uh, we have uh, we can now monitor, you know, uh, 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 we'll put AI in terms of our our operational, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this, you know, decisions as we actually hone them down and make it more, 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 more simple. And our ability to monitor and communicate across the uh, the, the United States and its territories, we know where everything is all the time, and that's useful. That's useful for making the, you know, making decisions. And this is the problem. We had technology and nobody used it, right? And now we're starting to. Uh, you know, to employ it. Mm -hmm. 
So we've got time for, for one more question. Uh, Louis, you and I met in the summer of 2020, right? A few weeks, I think, after you came into the job. Um, and it was a very political time. It was uh, during the uh, presidential election. There was a lot of swirl going on. And I think you've proved in the past three years um, that it's not about politics. It's about, about operations and effectiveness and organizational focus. Um, and it has been a quite the journey over three years. What do you still uh, like about the job? What, what gets you excited about the job? I'm fascinated, right? As I said when I came, it's, uh, well, you know, first of all, it's important work. It's consequential, and I like those types of things. And uh, uh, the people that I work with in the organization are just, you know, when I travel around the country, just awesome public servants and work hard, and they're excited. They're excited for what we're doing, and when you're a leader of an organization and you excited everybody, right? You got to follow through on it, right? And uh, uh, so I'm co I'm committed. I have a great management uh, leadership team. I have like 16 direct reports. That's how I got rid of the institutional memory. I didn't bring new. I mean, same people. I just reorganized them, right? So they had to think that you know differently. Uh, but it's it. This is a a fascinating ride. I'm blessed to lead. An organization of this stature at this time, and I want to see it. Uh, I want to. I want to see cash generating. That's it. People happy and cash generating. So. Yeah. Well, we thank you for your leadership. Um, you do. You're you're writing a playbook for transformation that I think is going to be a model for uh, the United States in the 21st century. And and you touch every one of us uh, here in the room and across Every the country. Day. So yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.